Do, do, do. Hi, I'm Mignon Fogarty, better known as Grammar Girl, and this is Behind the Grammar episode number 25. I have not pod faded, I just took a few years off here in beautiful Reno, Nevada. So what have I been up to? Well, if you listened to Behind the Grammar before, since then I've probably published a couple of books. I definitely made an iOS game called Grammar Pop that I coded myself. That was a fun, long, intense project. I'm Right now I'm excited about a card game I'm making called Peeve Wars and a talk I'm going to be giving in June in Cambridge. So let me tell you about those things. Uh, Peeve Wars is a card game that came about because I've always imagined that pet peeves are little monsters like the Tasmanian devil who come around and, uh, and annoy you and bother you. So I always wanted to make a card game out of these monsters, but I didn't know how to do it. Well, now that crowdfunding is possible, I can make this game. So I teamed up with Len Peralta, an artist you may know, and Joe Kissenweather, a friend of mine who's a game designer. And we've been playing with homemade test cards. The other thing I'm excited about is a talk I've just been invited to give um, on June 26th and June 27th in Cambridge, England. And the conference is called Bridging the Unbridgeable, Linguists, Prescriptivists, and the General Public. And I'm so excited because, well, first I'm excited because I get to go to Cambridge, <laughs> but I'm also especially excited because this topic is something I think about and agonize about almost every day. So lingua, so prescriptivists tell people how to use words. They say do and don't do that. And linguists describe how words are actually used, how people use the English language. And they both have really valid points. So when people come to me as a grammar girl, they're asking a question such as, should I use impact as a verb to mean effect? And I have to tell them, no, don't use impact as a verb to mean effect because it annoys people. It's a, it's a pet peeve, actually. And so people come to me for the safe answer, and that's the safe answer. But linguists will tell you that lots of people use impact as a verb to mean effect, and it's perfectly normal to do so, and that's the direction that language is changing. Impact has taken on a new meaning, and that's something that in, words in English do all the time. It's how English changes, and it, it happens really a lot more than you realize. And then just every once in a while, there are these words that change and for some reason annoy people when they do. And that's sort of how pet peeves come about. And I completely get the linguist point of view. This is how our language is. It's how it changes. But I have to tell people, don't use the word that way because that's what they want from me. They want the safe, clear answer. They don't come to me for a long description of how English changes and they could do this or they could do that and it depends on how they want to be perceived by the people they're speaking to. And I mean, I do actually try to say that in most of my podcasts, but when people come on Twitter or Facebook and ask a question and I have a, a small uh, space in which to answer the question. Sometimes I just say, no, don't do that. And, and then sometimes I feel bad. So I'm really looking forward to going to this conference to be able to think more about this topic and how I approach it, and especially to hear what other people at the conference have to say about this topic. So that's in Cambridge on uh, June 26th and 27th, and the conference is called Bridging the Unbridgeable, Linguists, Prescriptivists, and the General Public. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, what else have I been up to? Well, I've been doing a lot of interviews with other podcasters, especially in the last few weeks. And since I went to the New Media Expo in Las Vegas a, maybe a month ago now, and I met a lot of podcasters there, and I've been following up and doing interviews, and that's been great. So who have I been talking to? I talked to Elizabeth Schneider from the Wine for Normal People podcast. She has a great voice. And I answered some questions for her about the language of wine. So, for example, we determined that champagne should be capitalized because it's a region. According to AP style, you would capitalize champagne. And that made her happy because she thinks it should be capitalized. And she answered some questions for me about wine. And she got me so excited. I went out today and I bought a bottle of port. I don't know if you can see that, but I bought a bottle of port on her recommendation because she got me excited about wine and port is a is a wine it's a fortified wine so it's sort of different and special 
how did I choose? Well, I probably should listen to a few more of Elizabeth's podcasts because I chose completely based on price. I don't know anything about port. So I didn't want to get the most expensive port and I didn't want to get the least expensive port. So I got the one that was in the middle of the pack. And that's entirely how I made my decision was based on price. And again, it made me think of my crowdfunding project because at the New Media Expo, I talked with Kent Nichols and he had great things to say about price strategy and how it's so important for a crowdfunding project and you need to choose your prices carefully and not have too many rewards. So I, I di actually didn't let him look at my uh, project before it went live. I got too busy and I didn't want to wait anymore to launch it. So um, I probably have too many rewards because I couldn't decide. There were so many cool things I wanted to offer. So if you go over there to findanything.com slash pwars, take a look at all the rewards and uh, you can let me know if you think it's confusing and there's too many. I, I made a chart so you can see what you get at every level. You don't have to just read through all of them. So I hope that helps. Last week, I also talked to Derek DuPlessis for his podcast, Purpose Rockstar. I also met Derek at the New Media Expo in Las Vegas, and he runs a foundation in Boston that mentors homegrown artists and entrepreneurs between the ages of about 18 and 24, and he helps them be successful. So he's a nice guy who seems to be doing amazing work. Check out his podcast, Purpose Rockstar. Who else did I talk to? I had a great talk with Catherine and Damien from the Newbie Writers podcast. Um, our shows were up against each other in the Stitcher Awards for Best Education podcast, and they were very gracious and really nice about it, and um, actually neither of us won, and they were, they were great, and I just had a, a wonderful time talking with them, so check out the Newbie Writers podcast. I also talked with Todd Newman for his Todd cast. We did a quick show about pet peeves, which is always fun. And then just tonight, I talked with Ray Ortega and his great crew, John Wilkerson, David Johnson, and Daniel J. Lewis for the Podcasters Roundtable. So I'm a podcaster. I love talking with people. So it's been a great week. And thanks to all these shows for having me on to talk and just to let me mention P4s because that's a big project I'm working on. So you might be wondering, what can you expect from Behind the Grammar in the future now that I have suddenly showed up in your feed again? Well, the honest answer is, I don't know. Um, I can say that for the last few years, I've been working on a lot of crazy, overwhelming projects, and I'm not going to be doing that so much anymore. So I hope I will have time to do things like this more often. Um, it's not going to be every week for quite a while at least, um, but I do hope to, to do it a little bit more regularly. If you're listening or watching, thank you. And if my card game sounds interesting to you, check it out at fundanything.com slash pvors. And check out all those great podcasts I just told you about, all those people I talked to this week. They're great, and their shows are interesting, so check them out too. And that's all for now. Thanks for listening.